What's up everyone? It's your girl Brandy Shanae and today I'm here to share with you some book mail that I want to share with you all and I feel like pretty much this will be my October book haul as well. These are a few books that I received from publishers and also um, from book box descriptions as well as pre-orders. So, pre -orders. so keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get started with the first package. Um, this is one that I received in the mail. This is from St. Martin's. Um, and so let's see what's inside this one. Oh, okay. So this is like a little, um, it's like a little promotional thing. So if you have pre-ordered the book, you were able to get something to go along with it. So I had pre-ordered When Harrow Was Here by Dustin Thau. So I was able to get the little tissue uh, that goes with the little tissue paper that goes with it. So that is really cool. And that's so cute. So I have some tissues to go with it, which I, I'm sure I'm going to need it. So I have this. The next one is going to be from Bloomsbury. So this, um, this right here. So let's open this one next. And let's see what's inside. <gasps> okay. 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 So we have this. It says, Dear Siren, thank you so much for pre-ordering pre -ordering Drown Me With Dreams by Gabby Burton. We hope you enjoyed this exclusive page over overlay depicting one of our favorite scenes from the book. Please keep in mind this page overlay was designed for the U.S. hardcover edition of the book and may not properly fit other editions. And then it goes on saying, we recommend inserting the overlay in chapter 50 uh, called Reckless, page 367, the chapter in which the scene takes place. Once again, thanks so much for pre-ordering. We can't wait to hear how much you loved this book. So here is the precious overlay. <sighs> so beautiful I cannot wait to put that in my book so I'm gonna leave that there so that was another uh pretty much promo type of situation if you had pre-ordered the book you also received that overlay so I'm really excited to put that in my book the next one is going to be from I don't know so we're just gonna have to open it and find out together so here's this is interesting so it says tear is a journey oh okay so i think this just recently came out this is the black hunger by nicholas pullen so this is the the arc look at that oh okay i'm i'm excited because i was thinking about reading this but i didn't i didn't hear anybody talking about it just yet maybe because no one has read it yet um but yeah this book came out um this month I'm not sure what specific day, but it has a note from the author as well, which I'll read out loud. It says, Dear Reader, I've been a fan of horror for a long time, from books to movies to video games. I can't even get enough of the genre. But while I love horror in all its forms, it's rare for me to find something truly fresh and exciting. When a story gets its hooks into me, creeps me out and breaks my heart, I know I found something special. Nicholas Pullen's The Black Hunger does all of those things and more. At its core, The Black Hunger is a gothic horror novel, but really, as with all great horror stories, there's much more lurking underneath the surface. It's a novel about love and sacrifice, about doing everything we can to protect those closest to us, and about how sometimes, probably more often than we think, there's an evil death cult hiding in, a pl in plain sight who want nothing more than to resurrect ancient and terrifying evil for the purposes of remaking the world in their twisted image. The book begins with the character John telling you that he will soon be dead. From there, what unfolds is an expertly crafted nesting doll of a story that takes you from the halls of Oxford to the icy peaks of, of Tibet. But as the book des descends into chaos, the beautifully written queer romance at the center provides a, pro a beating heart to keep the pages turning long into the night. If you're a fan of horror, you're in for a wild ride. But if you're thinking, I will never re read horror, I urge you to give this book a try. Yes, there are moments of terror and heartbreak, but if you stick with it, I believe you'll discover a love for the incredible story that Nicholas has written. And sincerely, this is by Bradley Eggert, the executive editor of Red Hook. So this is very interesting. I'm really excited to get into this. Oh, thank you so much for sending me this. I'm really excited. I was thinking about this book. I've seen it everywhere. Um, and I was like, hmm, this sounds pretty interesting, but I'm glad that I got this. So now I can read it. So here is that. 
The next one is going to be from Barnes and Noble. And y'all already know by now, sometimes I have issues when it's time to open these boxes because I be having my moments of like, what the heck? So be patient with me as I try to uh, make a few attempts to opening this box. Which I might get my box cutter, need be. So let's see. Ugh. Okay, so here, finally got it open. It's a manga. This is a pre-order. This is volume seven of Honey Lemon Soda. So I haven't read volume uh, six yet. I still have to read it. And then here is volume seven, which I really love Honey Lemon Soda. I know that it's now going to become, it's going to become an anime. I don't know when it's going to be released. I thought it was going to be released sometime in October, but I know sometime this year um, it's going to be released as an anime. So I'm really excited to get into this. But once again, this is Honey Lemon Soda. This is by Mayu Murata. So here is this one, if you wanna get a closer look. Sorry about the glare, but there it is. So there is that. The next one, this is gonna be from Simon and Schuster. Ooh, okay. So this is called Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is by Ray Bradbury, the author of Fahrenheit 451. So we have this, for those who still dream and remember. So thank you so much, Simon Schuster. Pre really enjoyed, I'm just grateful to have this. So I haven't read this book. Um, let me know down below in the comments if you have, but thank you once again. This looks really good. Let me see, it says, for those yet to experience the hypnotic power of its dark poetry, step inside. The show is about to begin. Cougar and Dark's pandemonium shadow show has come to Greentown, Illinois, to destroy every life touched by its strange and sinister uh, mystery. The carnival rolls in something after, sometime after midnight, ushering in Halloween a week early. Hmm, so Halloween vibes. I feel it, I feel it. So yeah, this seems perfect for October. So here is this. The next one is going to also be from Simon, Simon & Schuster. Ooh, this is a creepy read as well. <laughs> Perfect for October. All right, so we have The Haunting of Velkwood. And this is by Gwendolyn Kist. Or Kist. Hmm. Here is the cover. And it says a suburban ghost story about a small town that trapped three young women who must confront the past if they're going to have a future. It says the Vecwood vicinity is a topic of occult theorists. Tabloid one hour docu document, uh, document, documentaries <laughs> and even some pseudoscientific investigations as the block of homes disappeared behind a near impenetrable veil that only three survivors could enter and only one has in the past 20 years until now hmm. i'm intrigued this is very interesting so thank you so much simon schuster <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to get into this it sounds really interesting it reminds me of like the movie or the show the dome a little bit even though this is not a dome, it's a veil or whatever, but still intriguing. So there's that. Next, we have a package from Barnes and Noble. So let's open this one. And I know what this one is because I had a pre-order. Uh, and I'm really excited to read this. Okay, so as I'm opening this, I want to remind you that he is one of my favorite authors for sure, like hands down, especially after reading all his books <laughs> in one year. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get into this one. So, and then I also have another pre-order as well. So the first one is Dinosaur Sanctuary. This is volume five. Really love Dinosaur Sanctuary. If you like Jurassic World, if you like Jurassic Park and stuff like that, this is for you. I really love this. I cannot wait to read the fifth volume. So here is this. And then my favorite author, who's become my favorite author of all time. Oh, that is the most boring book ever. Words by Brandon Sanderson. Pictures by Kazu Kabushi. Yes, his first picture book. It says, a boy sits in a chair. He is bored. You will be too. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm really excited. It says, this is simply the most boring book ever. A boy sits in a chair, 
thinks about doing laundry and does his math homework. It's a boring book, you'll see. Please do not imagine dragons, sky pirates, or anything interesting. You will just be disappointed. Oh god, I'm really, I'm really excited to get into this and read this to my kids. But yep, I have this by Brandon Sanderson, his first picture book. <sighs> I'm excited. So yeah, I'm gonna read this with my kids. So there's that. Um, let's see. Now, we have, let's go to this one real quick. So the next one we have here is going to be from, I'm not sure, but it looks like a promo. So this is under the same stars. So let's see what's in here. Ooh, it's hefty. <gasps> yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. This book comes out next year in February and so we have under the same stars this is by Libba Bray oh my gosh just look at this look at this oh ah! oh okay so we also have this let me read it let me read it so it says dear reader I have no idea where stories come from one minute I could be watching a sparrow pecking for seed on an um on a NYC sidewalk and the next I'm wondering if that sparrow is perhaps part of an international bird spy ring. I didn't say all story ideas were winners. Finding the strange and wondrous connections between seemingly unrelated things, the search for deeper meaning, and crafting all of it into a story with a beating heart is one of the only forms of magic I know. The other is, is dog. <laughs> or is dogs. It says, when I began writing Under the Same Stars, I had plenty of time to think about connections. We were isolated in our homes, separated by a global pandemic that had brought the world to an eerie standstill. Democracy was under siege at home and abroad. Hard-won rights were being rolled back and ugly and all too familiar ne nepotism was on the rise. There were factions that wanted to pull us back to some um, hierarchically of greatness and other factions that were questioning those very myths. Even more than COVID, I was worried about the virus of hate and intolerance. It was against this backdrop that I read an ar article about a matchma matchmaking tree in Northern Germany called the bridge, the bridge groom or the bridegroom's oak. For more than a century, lonely hearts have written letters to this tree, which has its own postal code and through its magic have found romantic partners and lifelong friends. I was captivated by this analog form of tender. And then my mind began to itch. What happens to that tree during, what happened to that tree during, during World War II? What if it could have been used not just for love letters, but also for espionage, for resistance? The match had struck and taken flame. I imagined two German teenagers, Sophie and Hannah, best friends on the treacherous edge of mat uh, maturity and war. Somehow their story stretched further to divided Berlin in 1980 and the unlikely connection between the shy American student Jenny, the rebellious punk rocker Lena, and Frau Hermann, an enigmatic older neighbor. Still, there was more. The story continued with New York City high school seniors Miles and Chloe in the spring of 2020. Stuck in lockdown, they are, des they are desperate to solve an 80-year-old cold case, the vanishing of three teenagers near the bridegroom's oak on the night of the winter solstice in 1941. As Chloe's grandmother says, there is no such thing as just a story. Under the Same Stars is a book about romance and friendship and all sorts of families. It is about memory as witness, as witness and about the lies we tell ourselves to stay safe. It is about ordinary people finding extraordinary courage. It is about love as a form of resistance and resistance as an act of love. Above all, it is about the necessity of hope in challenging times, for hope is the seed from which a brighter future grows. And that was written by Libba, uh, Libba Bray. And it also says, sorry, mom, for ending that sentence with the preposition. <laughs> I'm keeping this, but I'm really excited to get into this. Um, I've been wanting to read Libba Bray forever. And I, uh, and I feel like I, once I heard about this book coming out like next year, I really wanted to read this because it sounds so amazing and it sounds so inspiring and it like with historical stuff as well I love it so we have different perspectives starting from uh, the year of 1930 uh, 1939 to 1980 to 2020 so just a mat like I'm really excited to get into this um and yeah I was <laughs> I was not expecting this at all 
and I'm just really excited and I cannot wait to read with read this read this and I'm thinking of also doing a book review for this but yes I'm really excited to read this and once again I was not expecting it so here this is yay <laughs> okay so now we have my fairy loot box I don't know what month this is for. I'm, I'm guessing it's for this month, to be honest with you. Um, so we have two books in here, the YA and the adult book. So as I open it, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna get to it and I'll also share with you the theme as well. So this looks like the YA book, which let me know down below in the comment section, in the comments if you have read it or not. So for the theme, this is for, okay, this is for September, and it's called um, Mastermind. And then the book we have for Mastermind was The Dagger and the Flame. This is by Catherine Doyle. It says The City of Phantom. So here is the book. Here is the edges. Here is the back. If I take the dust jacket off, ooh, this is what it looks like. Here are the end papers which gives scenes of the book or book scenes from the book. And then we have the a reversible dust jacket as well. So we have that. And this is going to be the, every time with Fairy Loot, they change the cover up a little bit from the original. So just keep that in mind if you didn't already know that. And so for this one, it says, In Phantom, a kingdom of cobbled streets, flickering lamplight, uh, lamplight, beautiful buildings, and secret catacombs. Shade magic is a scar is a scarce and deadly commodity controlled by two enemy guilds: the cloaks and the daggers, the thieves and the assassins. On the night of her mother's murder, eighteen-year-old Seraphine runs for her life, seeking sanctuary with the cloaks. Sarah's heart is set on revenge, but as but are her secret abilities a match for the dark-haired boy whose quick, quick silver eyes follow her around the city? Nothing can prepare Sarah for the moment she finally comes face to face with Ransom, heir to the Order of Daggers, and Ransom is shocked to discover that this unassuming farm girl wields a strange and blazing magic he has never seen before. And it says, a fiery enemies to lovers romanticy. So, hmm, interesting. Like I said, let me know down below in the comments if you have read this book. And then it goes on to say from, uh, the, um, we get a note from the author, a letter from the author as well. It says, Dear Fairy Loot Reader, Welcome to the glittering city of Phantom, a place of cobbled streets, flickering lamplight, beautiful buildings, and cedar catacombs. Here, danger lurks in every shadow, and magic has never been more menacing. The city and its dark magic belongs to the Cloak and Daggers, rival orders of thieves and assassins who have been at each other's throats for centuries. So begins a tale of forbidden love between Ransom, a ruthless dagger on the hunt for his next kill, and Seraphine, a brand new cloak seeking revenge against the assassin who murdered her mother. Caught in a treacherous game of cat and mouse that takes them across the towering rooftops and into the secret underbelly of Phantom, Ransom and Seraphine soon find themselves facing the deadliest question of all, kiss or kill. Hmm. For years, I've dreamt of writing an epic enemies to lovers fantasy, where the stakes are impossibly high, the romance is truly thrilling, and the rivalry is as real as it comes. The dagger and the flame is the realization of this dream, and I couldn't be prouder of it. Seraphine and Ransom hold a special place in my heart, and I can't wait for you to meet them. I hope you enjoy this tale of forbidden attraction and dangerous magic, of found family, and the kind of extraordinary bravery, both in life and in love, that can rewrite destiny. And then it goes on to say, I will leave you with this with the immortal sword of Saint Ariel of Phantom. Content are the souls who submit to the winding strands of fate. Blessed are those who dare to spend their own. Happy reading, Catherine Doyle. So hmm, I will give this a try. You know, romanticies, sometimes there's is a hit and miss for me when it comes to romanticies, but I'm I'm glad I'm here to give it a try, especially when it talks about assassins, a murder. I'm here for it. So I'm going to give it a try. So there's that. And then we have the adult book, which I'm really excited to read because I, I finally read her, um, the Drowning Empire trilogy, and I'm excited for this new series. So for this book, the theme is Power Struggles. So here is that. And then we have the book itself, The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart. And here it is. And here are the edges. It looks like that all around. And then if I take the dust jacket off, oh, I like it. 
here is this. Here is that, here is the back, and then here are the end papers. And here is that. And then also we have a reversible dust jacket as well. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> so let me read the synopsis and I'm, I'm sure there's also an author's note as well. So let's see. It says, The Gods Below begins an epic new fantasy series from the Sunday Times bestselling author Andrea Stewart, where two sisters find themselves on opposite sides of a war against gods. <sighs> I'm going to leave it at that. I'm gonna, I want to be surprised. <laughs> so, but anyway, I will read the author's note. So it says, Dear Fairloot Reader, The Gods Below started with sinkholes with the hollow world with the curiosity and fascination I've always had for dark and quiet places, and then a hell, and then a held breath ripe with magic and possibility. It's hard not to find inspiration in the, in the world around me, in the ways we look at others and find reasons to set them apart in ways both big and small. To make them different enough that they matter less, to make them enough, or to make them different enough that they matter less, excuse me. I wanted to write a story set in a world that is harsh, that is unforgiving, that encourages people to lash out at one another, and then to write characters that fight against that tide. Characters that, against all, all odds and reasons, find their ways, ways to one another to trust and even love the ones the world has told them not to. Hakara and Harasha are sisters, torn apart by a climactic event and tossed onto opposite sides of an ongoing war. Malayne is an inventor and explorer, desperately searching the depths for a cure for his sick friend. Shunan is a, is a politician dev devoted to saving her family and her clan from ruin. And Nyanin is a god, driven from his home to the surface, trying to find a way to exist in a place he does not belong. They are all terribly flawed and wretchedly wrong about so many things, but I, but I adore each of them. I hope you find your way to loving them too. Happy reading and here's to the start of a new adventure. Love, a Andrea Stewart. Ugh. I'm excited to get into this. Ah, I'm really excited. But yeah, so we have this. Let's move on to the next package, which I'm not sure where it says. This says from Custom Decorations. It's from somewhere international. Um, so it looks like, okay, excuse me. It's from Watkins Media. All right. And it looks like it's, it might be a tote bag. Okay. So it says, ooh, it says, thank you so much for being part of the evocation, um, the evocation bond. We hope you enjoy the small gift as a sign of our appreciation. Team Angry Robot. Oh, thank you. Okay. So here is a poster, which I need to find something for it. So here's a poster. It, you should be able to recognize where this is from. So I'm gonna put this here and then we have oh, a bookmark the devil knows your name David Astershoff right here here's the bookmark and then we have the tote bag evocation by ST Gibson so here is that I'm always I'm here for a tote bag shoot I love tote bags so thank you so much, Angry Robots. I really appreciate this so, so much. So let's move on to the next thing. This is going to be from Gabby Burton, who wrote, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time, Sing Me to Sleep, and also her newest book as well that recently came out, Drown Me with Dreams. All right, so we're going to open this up. gosh oh, we got art prints oh, man I'm gonna need to get some poster stuff oh my gosh okay so we got some art prints it says so here is this and it says dear Brandy thank you so much for joining the street team for drown me with dreams and all the love you've shown me and um and this sorts oh my god and forever grateful for your support best wishes oh so here is an art print Oh my gosh. Look at Hayes and look at Sorsha. Oh, beautiful. And then we have this as well. And here it is on the back. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. And then 
We have some beautiful bookmarks, See Me to Sleep. This is double-sided. I also have this one, Words Sting, Songs Kill. This is also double-sided. We have this right here where she signed it so I could put it in my book. And then we have another bookmark, uh, Sing Me to Sleep, which I don't know if I've shown y'all this one or not but it's double-sided. So thank you so much, Gabby. I'm still, don't worry, I'm still gonna do the book review. Trust me, trust me, cause I, I love Draw Me With Dreams. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so here is that. And then we have another box from Fairy Loot, which I have an idea what this one is. I wonder if y'all can guess. <laughs> Probably not, but you'll find out sooner or later, just in, in a few moments. So let me open this one. This is also from Fairy Loot. Ah, I'm excited. All right, sorry, sorry, y'all. I'm I'm a mess over here. I'm excited, so don't mind don't mind me. All right. Speaking of Drown Me with Dreams, we have the Fairy Loot edition of Drown Me with Dreams by Gabby Burton. So I have Sing Me to Sleep, which is also a Fairy Lou edition. Now I have Draw Me with Dreams. Oh, and you can put them together. This is what it looks like. This is beautiful. Oh, so freaking beautiful. And then if I take the dust jacket off, this is what it looks like. And here's the back. Here is the spine. Oh, just look at those edges. They are beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, and then I got the, um, I think it said page. I have the um, inlay for the pages. Let me see if I can find that. It said chapter 60, right? If I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to find the little paper. I'm gonna put that in here because I, I got it put in there. So let me see if I can find, or said three. I'm trying to see where I put that paper, y'all, because I need to know um, which one it's stated. So I don't remember. And I got tons of paper all around me. Okay. Either way, I'll put it in here for now, and then I'll put it in its place where it needs to go. But yeah. So it doesn't really fit the UK edition, but it still works. So yes, so here we have it, Draw Me With Dreams. And I mean, and it's signed and the end papers are beautiful. Oh, just look at this. I love it so, so much. Oh, Gabby. Oh, I'm so excited. Anything written by Gabby Burton is an automatic read for me and she's gonna be a, a, an auto buy author for me, hands down, so. Just keep that in mind, y'all. Just keep that in mind. All right. So the next book we have is going to be from Barnes & Noble. So let me open this one as well. <sighs> I have issues with Barnes & Noble's boxes. I don't know why. It's just like, it's, ugh. Let's see if I can open it. Okay, here we go. Which this is a pre-order, which I'm really excited to read, which is probably going to be a book that I read next month. And that is The Indian Card. This is says, Who Gets to Be Native in America? This is by Carrie Lowry Schultz-Pels. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. If not, I do apologize. But here is the book. And it goes on to say here, it says, To be Native American is to live in a world of contradictions. And it goes on to say, at the same time that the number of people in the U.S. who claim Native identity has exploded, increasing 85% in just 10 years, the number of people formerly enrolled in tribes has not. While the federal government recognizes tribal sovereignty, being a member of a tribe re requires navigating blood quantums, quantum laws, and role, roles that the federal government created with the intention of wiping out Native, American, Native people altogether. Over 2 million Native people are tribally enrolled, yet there are Native people who will never be. Native people who, for a variety of reasons ranging from displacement to disconnection, cannot be card-carrying members of their tribe. And then it goes on to say, Carrie, with, uh, Carrie grapples with these contradictions. Through in-depth interviews, she shares the stories of people caught in the mire of identity formation, trying to define 
define themselves outside of bureaucratic processes. With archival research, she pieces together the history of blood quantum and tribal roles and federal government intrusions on Native identity making. Reckoning with her own identity, her own story of enrollment and the enrollment of her children, she investigates the cultural, racial, and political dynamics of today's tribal identity pol pol policing. She faces the question that many Native people do, who is Indian enough? So that's really interesting. I'm really excited to read this. And it goes on to say more about Carrie. It says Carrie is, is an enrolled member of the Luby, Luby, tri or Luby tribe of North Carolina. She spent seven years working in the Obama, Obama administration on issues of homelessness and native policy. She holds an MFA in creative writing from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and a master in public policy from Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. It says the Indian card, Indian card is her first book. So I'm really excited to read this. Um, I'm really thinking of, re if anybody wants to read this with me, just let me know. But this is definitely going to be a book that I'm, I cannot wait to read and unpack and just think about a lot of things regarding, um, you know, <laughs> like, who, like Indian enough, like, what does that mean? You know, and to, I just want to go more into depth on this, because there's some things that I'm just not aware of. And I'm, and I'm just happy that there's a book available that we all can read. Now this I wanted to have this on hand, because I plan on tabbing it up and do so. Otherwise, I probably would have just bought one borrowed a book from my local library. But I wanted to have my own physical copy, because I definitely plan on dissecting this book and tabbing it to death. So yes, cannot wait to read. Next book, it's going to be from Waterstones. Ah, okay. So this is the next book by S.T. Gibson called uh, Odd Spirits. So here is this. And it has little sprayed edges as well. And once again, and then look at the end papers. This is really pretty. So I'm really excited to get into this. And it's also signed by S.T. Gibson as well. So had to get it. I love evocation. So I know this is so also rolling into the same thing as well. So it's called Odd Spirits. So I'm really excited to read this. But yes, I just had to get it. All right, y'all. So I have two more packages that I want to share with y'all. Just two more. So with this, this is going to be from, let's see. I'm not sure. Oh, Macmillan. So it's going to be from Macmillan Children's Marketing. So let's open this one. I'm not sure what's in here. Maybe it's from a promo for pre-ordering something maybe. Let's see. Yes, so this is a promo. All right, cool. So since I had pre-ordered The Most Boring Book Ever by Brandon Sanderson, I was also able to get the poster to go along with it for uh, pre-ordering it. So here is the book and then here is the poster for pre-ordering. So here is this. So there is that. Now we're down to the last and final package. And this is from The Broken Binding, which I've been waiting for years to be a part of the subscription. It's like one of the top subscriptions that I've wanted um, regarding, you know, uh, special editions. So let's go ahead and, and this is going to be my first official box for becoming part of the fantasy subscription. So I'm excited to share with you the first book that I'm able to get since I'm now a, a member or subscribe member. And as I open it, it says prepare for your next adventure. And this is what it looks like. I love how they package the books nicely. And it's well protected. And this is a chunky book and here is how it is packaged and also it has a beautiful bookmark to go along with it and it says the dragon bone chair october 2024 and it goes on to say books are a form of magic because they span time and distance more surely than any spell or charm so that's what it says here and then it says memory sorrow and thorn right here on the sticker so let's open this together. Okay. 
and here is the book the dragon bone chair memory sorrow and thorn by tad williams so here is the book here is the stenciled edges it has a sword and you can see the little ribbon bookmark within it right here it's purple on the back it says honor is a wonderful thing but it is a, a means not an end a man who starves with honor does not help his family. A king who falls on his sword with honor does not save his kingdom. Oh, and so, okay, I'm gonna take the dust jacket off. So here's what it looks like naked. Here's also the back. And then we have these beautiful end papers. This is okay. So I haven't read this series at all. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, so I'm really excited to read this. It says this book is dedicated to my mother, Barbara Jean Evans, who taught me a deep affection for Toad Hall, the Hundred Acre Woods, the Shire, and many other hidden places and countries beyond the fields we know. She also induced, induced in me a lifelong desire to make my own discoveries and to share them with others. I wish to share this book with her. And then it has a map right here and then it goes on with an author's warning it says wanderers in the land of austin ard are cautious are cautioned not to put blind trust in old rules and forms and to absorb observe all rituals with a careful eye for they often mask between or mask being with seeming it says aquatic folk of snow mantle troll fells have a proverb he who is certain he knows the ending of things when he is only beginning them is either extremely wise or extremely foolish. No matter which is true, he is certainly an unhappy man, for he has, has put a knife in the heart of, of a wonder. More bluntly, new visitors to this land should take heed, avoid assumptions. The Quanic have another saying, welcome stranger, the paths are treacherous today. So there we have it. So this is the first book in the series and it is really chunky. I wasn't expecting it to be this big, um, but it is at least 900 and let me be exact is 934 pages. And I also like it, the book as well, because the, um, the words are pretty big as well. So, because I imagined that it was going to be a small print, but it's not. It's perfect size. So, we have that. And once again, like I said, this is my first official book from the Broken Binding of be becoming a subscriber to their book box subscription for fantasy. Now, I'm waiting on the uh, wait list for sci-fi, and then, and then I'll be, I'll be good. But there is that as well. And so, all together, I'll share with you all the books that I received from publishers and also some pre-orders as well. So here it is. These are all the books that I received in the mail from publishers, pre-orders, and more. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But once again, thank you all so, so much for watching, and I hope you all are staying healthy and staying safe, and I will catch y'all next time. Bye, everyone.